I will show you how to design a two-page fashion-themed spread for a magazine from start to finish. For this magazine layout, I am using these settings, 8.5 by 11 inches, portrait orientation, two pages, check facing pages, start at page number two, skip columns, we'll set column guides in a different way, my top and outside margins will be half an inch, and my bottom and inside margins will be 0.6875 inches. You may need to click on this link icon to break it, meaning you can give each margin a different parameter. Then you may need to scroll down to see the bleed. We want those to all be the same, and let's set them at 0.125 inches. This is a very common bleed. And if you don't know what I mean by bleed, I will explain it in a moment. We can ignore the slug. The slug is an additional space outside the page margins where you can include notes for a professional printer, which is intended to assist with the printing and trimming process. We are ready to click create. FYI, I am using the typography workspace. Let's start by creating some guides. Go to the layout dropdown and create guides. Go with five columns and a gutter of 0.375. The gutter refers to the space between the columns. I like to fit my guides to the margin. Five columns may seem really small, but you will soon see the method to my madness. Let's bring in our fashion photo. I will drag my photo onto my workspace. I can see my cursor is loaded with the photo. I will click once, which brings my photo in at its actual size. Then I will move it around a bit until I like the placement. I am mindful that I want my spread to feel unified, so I will move the image a little bit over to span both pages. Right here is where the magazine will bend from its binding. This area is often referred to as the gutter as well. This is a good moment to explain how bleed works. Because I want the top of my image to go to the edge of the page, I must be sure my image reaches the bleed line. If you set a bleed, that means you want some parts, if not all, of your design elements to go to the very edge of the page. So to help you remember this term, don't think of blood and gore. Think of how a marker bleeds. I'm going to use this handy tool to create my color swatches. I can click on my image and it will create my colors for me. You can always modify these, but I'm happy with this suggestion. So I will click this icon to add this theme to my swatches. Now it will be available in my swatch panel. From this panel, I will choose the lighter green first, select my rectangle shape tool, and draw a large rectangle. I will use my column guides for finding the right placement and width. Now I will open my layers panel so that I can drag my rectangle layer below my image layer. I will change to the overprint preview mode because that's just a personal preference. Then I will nudge my photo just a bit. Now let's create another rectangle with the darker green from our color swatches. Once again, I will move the rectangle behind her in the layers panel and then modify the size and placement. I'll extend the rectangle to the right side bleed and match the left alignment to my lighter green rectangle. Let's draw yet another rectangle with the dark orange from my color swatches. Stay mindful to make sure the left and right edges are aligned with the column guides we created. I feel like it needs something else so I will draw another rectangle with the lighter orange and place it here and drag it behind the image layer. This shape is a little more decorative, so I will break my rule on following the column guide. Now let's draw a black rectangle on the left page and move that layer behind the image as well. We're almost done with our shapes. I feel it needs a little more something, so I will create this tab appearance by creating little rectangles like this. I have enough colors in the mix, so I will be sure to use the design rule of repetition by using the same two oranges and echoing the arrangement. It's easiest to copy and paste this small shape to be sure it's the exact same size. Now it's time for our text. Let's select the type tool and being mindful of our column guides, click and drag to draw this size. I am matching the left and right guides and bottom margin. Right click to use the handy fill with placeholder text option. This is just made up text. Let's create columns for this text. 
box by going to the object dropdown and text frame options. In this window, choose two columns and increase the gutter to match the width we chose for those column guides, 0.375. See now how our columns and gutters match up nicely with our guides. Now I want to show you how to create a second text box on the other page in a way that they will be connected in the sense that the text will flow from box to box. We do that by clicking on this little box. If it has a red plus sign, that just means there is text not currently visible. Now create your new text box by click and dragging. I will place it here and try to match the guide and margin. You can always adjust it after if needed. The boxes are now connected. I will right click to add more placeholder text. Now let's change our font styling. Open the character panel. If you don't see it, you can find it under the window dropdown. I am selecting Kaluna Light with a 13 point size and 17 point line spacing, which is called leading. If you don't have Kaluna, just choose a readable font with a serif. Serif fonts are the ones with little extensions, which I often think of as feet and hats, and they are typically used for body text in print magazines. Let's now add a drop cap. We do this by opening our paragraph panel and increasing this selection here. I'll choose three because I want my first letter to drop the distance of three lines of text. There's a more elegant way to add space before and after paragraphs, but for the sake of time, I will use my enter key to force some spacing. Now on to creating a text box for our headline. I will write justify it in the paragraph panel and then go to my character panel to style the text. I'm choosing Avenir with a size of 64 and letting of 60. I like to use this feature to create all caps using change case from the type dropdown. I want the headline to be bolder, so I will change that to medium. I pushed the A to the next line because I think it looks better. Now I will zoom in and make sure that the right side aligns precisely with one of my column guides. Now I will create a subheader fill with placeholder text and change that styling to Avenir Light, size 30 and letting at 36. I need to write justify this and line it up to my guide. I am nudging the text boxes up and down a bit until I like the proximity. I am noticing that this green box would look better if its height is adjusted. I think that this rectangle and the black rectangle are too close in height. I think I should either make them the same height or more different so that it appears intentional. It makes better sense in overall visual weight. I need to adjust this tab detail as well now. Let's see how it's looking by zooming out and hiding the guides. You can hide or show guides with the shortcut keys command semicolon or control semicolon for non-Mac users. Now let's use the text wrap feature to fix this overlapping text right here. Open the text wrap panel and select wrap around object shaped and for type choose select subject. Now I will increase the offset to add some space between my object and text. Let's add a pull quote to appear over this black rectangle. I will draw a text box and right click to fill it with placeholder text. I need to highlight the text and change it to white or paper. Then I will change the font styling to acuta thin italic with a size of 22 and 26 letting. And then adjust the text box size until I like the placement. Let's drag in a new image, which is this quotation graphic. I can use object transform to rotate it. Holding down the shift and command keys and then dragging in a handle will scale down your image. I will spacebar to move the first word out of the way. We're almost done. We just need to add an image caption and a footer. I'll set my font styling first this time before creating my text box. If you already know your font styling, I suggest doing it first. I'm going with Kaluna Light 11 and 13. Then I will draw a text box in this area between her boots. I'll change this text to white and then nudge the placement of the text box. Then I will bold the first few words. 
Now for adding a footer. We could do that right inside of these pages, but with the idea that more pages would be added to this project, you would want to use parent pages. Open the pages panel. We can see our current creation, pages two and three right here, connected as a spread. Double click on the left side of the A parent. Anything we create here will appear on all of our pages. More specifically, we can differentiate between the left and right pages. Let's create a little text box, type page, and then move it down and align with the left margin. To be sure the pages will number automatically, we can go to the type dropdown, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. This A represents the page number. I'll style the number to be larger. Now let's copy and paste that text box to save time for the other page. You can see how we want to avoid placing anything near the middle as it would be hard to see in an actual magazine. So let's align this to the right margin. Open that pages panel back up and double click on one of our designed pages. Now you will see the page numbers at the bottom and populated with the actual number. One last tip. Sometimes I like to adjust the opacity of my black text because it can strike me as severe at times, as in a little distracting. We can do this by selecting a text frame and opening up our properties panel. If you don't see that, you can get your properties panel from the window dropdown. To be consistent, I will adjust that in my other text box as well. Now we're done. We can save and publish it online to get a link and then package our file to be sure we keep all of our assets in one place. Here in the publish window, be sure to select spread and then give your document a name. Click publish. Once it uploads, you will be able to view the document or copy the URL to share. It's always a good idea to package your project. Do this by going to the file dropdown and then package. I can see that I have no missing links or images, so I'll go right to packaging. It's reminding me that I have not saved my file yet, which is crazy, I should have, but I can save it now. I'm fine with all of these defaults, including the folder name it is suggesting. I will package. The folder it created contains what you see here. We have our fonts and images saved, our INDD files saved, and a PDF created and ready to go.